Sowing Seeds for the Community Through the winter and spring of 2020, volunteer seed sowers grew over 500 native perennial plants to give away free to the community at an event called Monarch Fest at Christ the King Lutheran Church in Westchester, Ohio. In this video, I will explain how we did it and why, in the hope that it encourages others. First, we spent some time reading about native plant varieties that were historically present in our natural areas here in Southwest Ohio. We chose plants we felt would offer the most benefit to our wildlife and our environment. The mass extinctions of insects, birds, and other wildlife taking place globally are alarming and due in part to the disappearance of the beautiful native plants that once provided food and shelter for a multitude of amazing creatures. As people who believe that we are caretakers of creation, we wanted to do something about it. We purchased some of the seeds from native seed vendors in our eco-region, but also gathered seeds from local native plants. Half of the plants we grew were milkweed varieties chosen for monarch butterfly conservation. We recruited volunteers of all ages and all experience levels from our church families, our friends, and our community, and we offered supplies for three different methods of growing the plants. I'll tell you just a little bit about each of these methods we used, but you can find links below in the description of this video that lead to instructional resources with more details. About a third of our plants were grown in the simplest method possible which was to sow seeds according to package directions directly into potting soil in plastic nursery pots. These were left outside for the winter. This period of cold, wet weather is necessary for many native perennial plants to germinate. The pots were simply labeled with craft sticks, covered with plastic netting, and sprinkled with red pepper pl flakes to discourage squirrels and birds from digging up our seeds. I first learned you could grow milkweed in pots outside over the winter at ourhabitatgarden.org. A few hundred of our plants were grown using another easy technique called winter sowing. 2020 was the first time any of us had tried this method, and we had a lot of fun with it. With the winter sowing method, seeds were planted in carefully prepared plastic jugs and put outside for the winter. The jugs acted like little greenhouses. This popular method is taught by Trudy Davidoff of wintersown.org. Our last video was a 10 minute tutorial all about this method, which we have really enjoyed. The third method was to grow plants indoors under lights. Some of our volunteer growers had grow lights and one of them stole her husband's shop light. So over a hundred of our plants were grown indoors. Many of the seeds grown indoors had to be artificially subjected to winter conditions before planting. This simply meant keeping them in the refrigerator for a few weeks in a damp paper towel or a cup of damp vermiculite. This is not difficult, and the directions often come with the seed packets. Most of the plants grown indoors were grown in soil blocks. Soil blocks are a really fun, family-friendly, organic gardening method for growing plants from seed without using plastic containers. We purchased our soil blocker online, but there are videos for making DIY soil blockers on YouTube. Seedlings grown in soil blocks are strong and healthy because of the dense nutrients in the special soil block recipe and because their roots benefit from a phenomenon called air pruning. Plants grown in soil blocks suffer no transplant shock at all when the time comes to transplant them because their roots are completely undisturbed. We first learned about soil blocking from organic gardening guru Elliot Coleman, though we used a simplified recipe which I've included in the description of this video. If you enjoy playing in the dirt, you will love making soil blocks. You can learn more about this method by watching the videos on the Soil Blocks playlist on the Youth for Monarchs YouTube channel. So now that I've told you about the three methods we used, you may be wondering how it went. 
After the last of our seeds were planted in the winter of 2020, we waited and we wondered. COVID-19 had given us a lot to wonder about, but seed sowing had given us something to hope for, together. As spring grew closer and the weather started to warm, seedlings started to sprout in our winter sowing bottles. The first were the wild lupins. And just a few days later, the purple prairie clover. I can't tell you how exciting it was to look into the top of the bottles and see those first tiny green leaves. About a week later, we had seedlings growing inside the soil blocks as well. And on the second day of spring in 2020, the first of the seeds planted directly in the nursery pots started to emerge. The plants growing in the soil blocks grew steadily indoors under their lights. And when daytime temperatures reached the mid-70s at the end of March, we opened our winter sowing bottles and enjoyed the new life. Everything progressed in the pots, in the bottles, and in the soil blocks, which were the first to need transplanted. When a cold snap in mid-April dropped temperatures below freezing, winter sowing bottles were closed back up. Plants indoors remained safe and warm, but we worried that the seedlings in the nursery pots might need protection, so an inexpensive pop-up greenhouse was put to use. We were happy to see the warm weather return at the end of April as a few of our plants were outgrowing their bottles. Transplanting took place steadily from this point. We set out a bin and asked for donations of plastic nursery pots Pots started to come in from all over. Our volunteers transplanted a little bit at a time as their plants became ready. At various rates, at various houses, through the end of May and into the beginning of June. In the warmth of the summer sun, everything really took off and our foster plants were ready for their new homes. Our seed sowing efforts have succeeded. Of course, I should tell you that not everything always went right, and we certainly learned a lot. We learned that sometimes more seeds germinate than expected, but sometimes less. We learned that Mother's Day is absolutely not the last day for freezing weather in Southwest Ohio, and that in a pinch, an SUV makes a fantastic greenhouse. We learned that milkweed has a few natural enemies. Some of them are really small, like slugs and aphids. Some of them are really cute, and we love them, but they do the work of the devil. And some of them were just trying to have fun. Mainly, we learned that with a little bit of faith and the support that comes from being part of a community, we could raise a lot of plants healthy, beautiful native plants to support the wildlife that depend on them, which in turn support us. So on June 13th of 2020, our volunteer growers were able to give away over 500 native plants free to the community. Of course, when we planted our seeds, our plan had been to give away our plants as we had the previous year, when we hosted a festival to give away milkweed. We realized that for 2020, that might not be safe, but we were determined to find homes for our plants, which is why Monarch Fest 2020 was a virtual event with online plant orders. And members of the community safely picked up their plant orders without ever leaving their cars. We believe that it's up to all of us to care for creation, that God made us in his image to look after the world that he so loved. That is why we do this, and we hope you will go out and sow some seeds of your own, because if we can do it, so can you. Youth for Monarchs is an official sponsor of Monarch Fest. See the link to the Monarch Fest website and many other useful resources below in the description of this video. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like or leave a comment below. Subscribe to this channel to be notified about future videos, and thanks for watching.